Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music, and today we're gonna to go ahead and continue our beginner guitar lesson series using the Hal Leonard Guitar Method, book one. Let's get started. All right, so today we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at page 40 here in the Hal Leonard Guitar Method, book one. Page 40, we're gonna learn a new note, which is C sharp. This new note is going to be kicking us into a new key signature, which is the key of D. So far in the book, we've learned stuff in the key of C, the key of G, and now we're kind of morphing into the key of D. Before we get started, I will toss out my reminder to head on over and check out my Patreon page and consider becoming a patron of Nick Tolman Music today. As a patron of Nick Tolman Music, you have access to a lot of great resources to help you out as you are learning guitar. Some of those resources include early access to video lesson content, a weekly guitar lesson series where you as patrons get to ask questions and request topics to be covered in those lessons, as well as a variety of other exercises and just things that I uh, put on Patreon to help you out along your way. It's a wonderful way to say thank you to Nick Tolman Music and a wonderful way to get you some extra help on your journey. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at page 40. So again, we are learning a new note, which is C sharp. Now, it's not too challenging anywhere that you know the note C. So we'll start with here with our first finger on the B string. A C sharp is just gonna be one fret higher. So you're gonna go to this second fret. Now the book doesn't actually show us the low C sharp, but you can figure it out the same way because we know our low C here on the third fret of the A string. All we have to do is go up one fret and we have C sharp, right? So we have C, or C sharp up here on the B string and we have C sharp down here on the A string. Now, uh, because the book doesn't show us that low C sharp, don't stress about it too much because it's actually not gonna show up in the next few exercises, but just so you know, there is another place to play C sharp in first position on the guitar. All right, so let's go ahead and try exercise 92. It is actually just a D major scale. So like I said at the very beginning, uh, this new note is going to be kicking us and pushing us into the key of D. So exercise 92 is a D major scale. It's a great way to just kind of start getting familiar with the notes that we're going to be using in the key of D. Here is exercise 92 at 72 on the metronome. One, two, ready and play. <laughs> Nothing too fancy about that, just watching out for your F sharp and your C sharp, making sure that you're playing those notes sharp rather than natural. Let's go and try it at 120 on the metronome. One, two, one, two, ready, play. Absolutely 120 is not the limit. You can definitely keep practicing this faster and faster. And with scale exercises, the sky is the limit. Keep practicing this and get it as fast as you can, really. All right, so let's go ahead and try exercise 93. We're gonna start at 72 on the metronome, then we'll talk about it a little bit, and then we will bump up the tempo. So here's 93 at 72 on the metronome. One, two, Ready and play. There we go. All right, so this one really reminds me of like a, almost like a Bond, uh, like the James Bond thing.
<laughs> that, that kind of feel. Um, but anyway, so at the very beginning, it's just open strings. We have C natural, right? And then C sharp. And remember, whenever you have an accidental, so the sharp is happening, the sharp sign is given to us within the measure, then that sharp is going to last through the entire measure unless they change it back to natural for us, but they don't. So in that second measure, it's a C sharp and then a C sharp again. And then the third measure, it kind of starts over again. Back to C natural, because we're in a new measure, and then C sharp. All right. So really the only tricky thing on this one is just watching out, making sure you're getting the C naturals in the right place and the C sharps in the right place. All right, let's do it uh, at a faster tempo. Here is 120 on the metronome. One, two, one, two, and ready, play. Yeah, definitely at that faster tempo, make sure that you're doing alternate picking on the eighth notes. Even though it feels a little weird. You actually have a couple options there. Um, you could go down, down, up, down, or you could go down, up, down, up, down. Actually keep a cons an actual alternate through the whole thing rather than doing a down, down, up, down, down, up. Um, so you can play with that and see what you like better. Either way, I think alternating on those eighth notes is gonna really help. All right, so let's take a look at exercise 94. This is called Rockin' Blues. And let's give it a shot. We'll start at 72 and then we'll bump the tempo up. So here is 72. One, two, and ready and play. So, uh, you know, sometimes with these exercises, I just have to kind of like scratch my head a little bit like, I mean, that's not the most rocking melody I've ever heard, but that's all right. With the chords underneath, it's definitely, it gives you some like bluesiness to it. So it'll, it'll be a little bit better with the chords, but some things to watch out for this one. So the entire thing basically is eighth notes, right? We do have some quarter notes in the last line but it's like eighth notes and rests. So the rests are kind of the key and the thing that I most often see as an issue with students on this exercise is that they kind of want to rush through those rests. So make sure that we're really counting. Two, three. Two and three and. Two and three and. Just make sure that you're really uh, consciously getting enough time in on those rests. All right. And then other than that, it's like a lot of open strings and second finger. Right. Until we get into that, going into the second line, we do have the D, third finger. And then it's back to what we had at the beginning. Oop. And then the last line changes a little bit, but it's super easy. There we go. All right, so that's kind of the idea. There's nothing too fancy about that. Let's go ahead and add some chords and see what it sounds like. Here we go. One, two, and ready and
Now you'll notice I got a little bit creative on the strumming pattern there, and that's totally fine. It's kind of just giving you an idea of maybe something you could do with something like this. I was trying to take the rhythm of the song and kind of, you know, create something underneath that fit well, but also made it a little more interesting. Now you haven't learned all of these chords yet, but as usual, if you wanna look ahead and learn some of these chords to try to play them, you can. But again, they are grayed out, so the book isn't expecting you to play these chords yet. All right, so let's go ahead and bump this up to a faster tempo. We're gonna go ahead and bump it to 120 on the metronome and give it a shot. So here we go. One, two, oh, one, two, and ready, and. All right, let's go ahead and add the chords to that and see how it sounds. One, two, oh, one and two, and ready, and. There you go, there's another idea for some strumming pattern stuff that you can do on that one. Kind of play around with it, make it interesting. At this point in the book, for strumming, again, you're not expected to learn the chords on this one yet, but as we start getting further and further in, it's about that time when you can start experimenting and making things that are more interesting. I know the book has only given us stuff like down, down, up, down, down, up, down, but really, there are so many options out there. And the concept here that I've utilized is just taking the song itself, taking the melody that's happening, ba da ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 you know, that kind of thing. And like, what can I do underneath of that to make that more interesting, right? And that's what I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking of that melody, that rhythm that's happening, and how can I complement that, be a part of it, make it more interesting, and go from there. Thank you so much for tuning into our lesson today. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or otherwise, please leave those in the comment section below, and we will see you next time. Thanks.